You know, I count it a, a blessing and a privilege uh, to stand before you today and um, certainly greet you in the precious name of Jesus. It, it is an honor to stand behind a podium and share the good news. Um, I don't take it lightly at all. You know, and in fact, uh, I know that we've shared even in the past that anyone who gets up here, you, you are not only charged, um, but it's your aim to rightly divide the word of truth. I don't want to come with, with tradition. I don't want to come with uh, these thoughts or these feelings that I may have. Right. We want to make sure that we are, are, are in the word and uh, certainly expressing what thus saith the Lord to the local assembly. Amen. 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 And, and with that as well, we certainly ask for your prayers um, as we start this new series. And um, it's called The Kingdom. Yes. It's called The Kingdom. It's a popular term that we hear all the time. Man, that's kingdom. That's, that's, that's kingdom. And, and we want to under, understand what the kingdom is. Uh, you're going to hear some things today, you know, uh, from a, a high level, and then you'll hear additional things in the weeks to come from, from, from different folks that will come up. Um, our theme will center around the kingdom. Um, and again, along with ensuring that we rightly divide the word of truth, um, ministers also try to share, you know, some, some words that you can remember, too. Because it, it's no sense that we get it on Sunday, but then we forget it on Monday. Right. Yeah, Y'all feel me? Right. Who remembers the message from last week? Hold on, hold on. Let me pull out some money right now. <laughs> I'm not playing. Who remembers the message from last week? What was the title? Huh? Yes. Eight, centimeters. Eight centimeters. Come on up, baby. Come on up. Come on up. I'm going to be like my third grader. Come on up and get a tidbit. Third grade teacher. Miss Banks, I remember. 36th Street School. If you out there still. Now y'all pray for me because I don't have no more money to give. But seriously. It's of no value if we receive it with joy. And then, you know, the Bible talks about the seed going out and, and, and popping up and, and the cares of life choking it. And, and, and also talks about the seed that goes out and it falls among thorny or, or stones and because it takes no root. So I pray that what we share today, I pray that what you are studying at home during your devotional time, I pray that what you learn during your Bible studies takes root. Yes. Amen? Amen? And that you apply what you are hearing when we gather together. Right. Amen? So sometimes what speakers will do, what, what ministers will do, is they'll come up with a nice, wonderful theme or a nice, catchy phrase so that we can remember some things through association. And since we're talking about kingdom, I thought about talking about the Game of Thrones. But I don't watch the Game of Thrones. And I don't know much about the Game of Thrones. Outside of I would ask, who's ruling your kingdom? That, that, you know. See, I have to do all this before Cephas gets to it. You know, he put me up here first, and I'm going to take all these little thoughts. I could say something like, kingdom under fire. You know, the, the spiritual warfare that we in, what to do when you're in, a, in an attack spiritually. I could probably put up, uh, for all you gamers, Minecraft. And ask, are you building the kingdom? Is this going over some of y'all heads? Okay. Well, I could probably put up a picture of Michael, Elvis, and a Budweiser. Nobody? King of pop, king of rock, and the king of nobody, huh? Well, you know what? I won't use any themes at all. Okay. We won't use any themes <laughs> if that's not going to help. Uh, you know, in the modern day church, though, the word kingdom 
is rather a popular uh, term. Again, it sounds nice, but as I mentioned, we have to look at the scripture as our guide. What are we talking about when we say kingdom? What does it mean? Um, Let's go to Psalms 103, 19. You know, the word kingdom, um, and you'll read within the New Testament, and even throughout the Bible, where it's often associated with either kingdom of God or, or kingdom of heaven. And in many cases for you Bible scholars, those words can be used interchangeably. You know, Matthew, when he wrote, he generally wrote uh, kingdom of heaven because he was writing to the Jews. And many theologians believe that he didn't want to use the name of the Lord in vain. So... He wrote kingdom of heaven. There are some differences, and we're going to touch on those a little bit later. But a kingdom is the rule of an eternal, sovereign God over all the universe. Everyone says, God rules the universe. God rules the universe. Now, several passages of scripture show that God is the undeniable monarch of creation. He is the king. Mm -hmm. Psalms 103 says, The Lord has established his throne in heaven, and his kingdoms rule over all. Daniel 4.3, you want to write this one down as well. Daniel 4.3. How great are his signs. How mighty are his wonders. His kingdom is an everlasting kingdom. And his dominion endures from generation to generation. Who rules the kingdom? Somebody. Who rules the kingdom? God rules the kingdom. First Chronicles 29, 11, and 12 says, Yours, O Lord, is the greatness the power, the glory, the victory, and the majesty, everything in heaven and on earth is yours, O Lord. Who rules the kingdom? God rules the kingdom. On a side note, because God rules all, we have to take notice of scriptures like Romans 13, 1, that says, let every one be subject to, or let every um, authority that exists exist because it is established by God. Let every person be subject to the governing authorities. Even our 45th president, his role has been established by God. Even your crazy, sometimes crazy supervisor. Even law enforcement, even other people in authority, we need to understand that their positions have been authorized by the king. Thus the need to pray for those that have rule over you, that our days may be well, that we may live in peace. Amen? Amen. While all the protests are happening, make sure you're praying. Even if you're out there taking a knee, make sure you're praying. Amen? A second thought is we don't trip when things get crazy down here. We don't. This stuff doesn't take our king by surprise, and it shouldn't take us by surprise. Because, you know what? More than me being an American, I'm a citizen of the kingdom. More than me being a specific ethnicity, right. I'm a citizen of the kingdom. That's right. That's true. So this doesn't matter. It doesn't matter. It doesn't matter whether you're Greek or Jew or male or female, for we are all one in Christ Jesus. Back to the kingdom. We also learn from the scripture that the kingdom can only be entered 
by being born again. Take your reference scripture, John 3, 5 and 7, or 5 through 7. And finally, some things that we also learn about the kingdom too. I want you to also write down 1 Corinthians 6, 9, and 11. 1 Corinthians 6, 9, and 11. Or 9 through 11, I'm sorry. Do you not know that the unrighteous will not inherit the kingdom of God? Now, it's funny because we look for a specific definition of kingdom within the scripture and we, we get some things. You know, we, we understand that God is the ruler of the kingdom. We get how to get into the kingdom. We're going to see later in the scripture that Jesus is preaching. You know, the kingdom is at hand, but, you know, what is the kingdom? We understand, too, and, and we're going to see through Scripture, too, that, that, that it involves righteousness, peace, and the Holy Ghost. But this is kind of interesting right here because we learn some things that we can do to end up missing the kingdom. 1 Corinthians 6, 9 through 11 says, Do you not know that the unrighteous will not inherit the kingdom of God? Do not be see, deceived, neither the sexually immoral, adulterers, adulterers, men who practice homosexuality, thieves, greedy, drunkards, revelers, swindlers. None of these folks are going to inherit the kingdom of God. Isn't that interesting? Pretty plain, right? It's plain, isn't it? Yeah. Watch this. The scripture says, and such were some of you. But you were washed, you were sanctified, you were justified in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ and by the Spirit of God. That could be another theme right there, missing the kingdom. When Jesus popped on the scene, the concept of the kingdom was actually well known by the children of Israel. This kingdom where God rules over all. They were a group of people who experienced so much loss because of their own choices. But the Jews were somewhat like modern day Chicago Cubs fans. Let me, let me give you my analogy. For the sports fans in the house, last year the Chicago Cubs won the, the World Series. Right? All right. This ended a 108-year drought of them, which was the longest record in all of major sports. You know, they, they, they won 109 years ago. And last year they won again. Well, each year after that first one that they won, they got new draft picks. They had new expectations. They had new ideas and new thoughts. We're going back to the championship. But they lost and they continued to lose. Well, for will, if you can, for will, go with me. The children of Israel at one point was in a place of prominence. During the reigns of David and during the reigns of Solomon, they were on top of the world. But because of sin, we know through history that they lost to the Babylonians. Babylonians lost to the Persians. And now here we are hundreds of years later and now they're under Roman rule. Imagine being in a place where you are looking for the Messiah, looking for the king who would come, and you're hearing through the scripture that the king's going to come, but yet hundreds of years have passed by and no Messiah. I'm still in this situation. I'm still 
in this place of loss. I'm still hoping and waiting, but still there's no change. Yes, yes, yes. When Jesus came on the scene, he preached the message of the kingdom, saying, first, repent, for the kingdom of heaven is at hand. The kingdom brings a message of hope. The kingdom is a message of deliverance. A kingdom is the message of salvation to people who are hurting, people who are lost, people who are in need. And that's really who I want to speak to this afternoon. I know that we experience every situation in life. I know that even in this room, there are people who've suffered hurt, people who've suffered loss, disappointment, pain. Even now, things may be going a little weary in your life. The message of the kingdom brings hope. But it starts with the word repent. Today, as we kick off this series discussing the many facets of the kingdom, I'll just say this now. There is hope if you're tired of losing. There is hope if you are in despair. There is hope if you are in need. There is hope if you are hurting. There is hope if you are tired of being sick and tired. There is hope if you want to change. But the message starts with the word repent. Both John the Baptist and Jesus started their message with repent for the kingdom of heaven is at hand. The kingdom of heaven is near you now. So what does this word repent mean before we get to kingdom? The word repent means to turn away from and I'll even add turn towards. So again, going in a direction and I'm turning away from this and I'm turning towards something else. Some of us are still in the same situation because we've turned, but then we've just turned back. Right. That's good. That's good, man. I like that. The Bible says that no man, having put his hands to the plow and turns away, is fit for the kingdom. I want to take this sign right now, or take this little cover, and imagine that it's a plow. And I don't know if you've ever pushed a lawnmower or pushed a trash can, but have you ever pushed it and it's just kind of veered off to the side? But as long as I'm looking forward, Derek, I'm able to keep it straight. But have you ever tried to push something forward and turn around. Right. Have you ever been driving your car and you're steering and you look some way and you, th does that make sense for you who drive cars? Mm -hmm. And you look down and you, no man having put his hands to the plow and turns away is fit for the kingdom. Because ultimately what's going to happen is when you turn and you look away, you're veering off the path. Right. That's good. That's good. A comparison of these features, when we look even in the scripture in Matthew and throughout the synoptic gospels will show as mentioned, that kingdom of heaven and kingdom of God are synonymous in many ways. But there is a difference that we're going to talk about. First, we're going to see that the message talks about both being at hand. Kingdom of heaven and kingdom of God are at hand. We'll see that with both throughout the scripture, there are some designated mysteries. 
Matthew 5 and 3, Matthew 10, 19 and 20, Mark 4 and 11, Luke 8 and 10. Now, I'd be happy to send all of these scriptures to you. We also see that there are going to be Gentiles in the kingdom of heaven, according to the scripture, Matthew 8 and 11. The kingdom of God is subject to rapid growth. Jesus gave the parable of the, the mustard tree or the mustard seed growing like a, a, a fast tree. And then the birds of the air came and put their nest in. And actually, theologians believe that the birds of the nest represent the enemy. It's interesting. There's also... Um, the parable about the farmer who told his servants to go out and sow seed. And they, they sowed seed in the ground. And, and at night, an enemy came and, and, and put some tares among the seed. And when it grew up, there was both weeds and the wheat. It's interesting that Jesus would say the kingdom of God is like this, or the kingdom of heaven is like this. That you would have wheat and tares in the kingdom. There's also the parable about Jesus telling them to cast the net out and bringing in all types of fish. But then, at the end, there's going to be some separating. Going back to the wheat and the tares, what did the master of the servants tell him? He said, you know what? Let it grow up, and at the end, we're going to do the separating. Isn't it interesting that the kingdom of heaven, and if you even look at the modern-day church, you get a little bit of everybody within the church. The challenge is, and the problem is, and the scary thing is, in the end, there's going to be some separating. There's going to be some separating. Mark 7.21 says, I'm sorry, Matthew 7.21 says, Not everyone who calls out to me, Lord, Lord, will enter the kingdom. Only those who actually do the will of my Father in heaven will. You know, it's interesting as well that when kingdom of heaven is generally spoken of, it references those who believe and profess that Jesus is Lord. Where kingdom of God is a little different. It speaks to the salvation of those who believe. And while we're all in this place and while we're all called children of God and while we're all seeking the kingdom, it's important that number one, our lordship remains under, under the authority of Jesus Christ. Amen. And that we're doing everything that we can to obey him on the daily basis. The reality is Matthew 7.21 is going to occur. It's, it's going to happen where there's going to be a separating. And God forbid that we spend our days in church, that we spend our days studying, that we spend our days fasting, and at the end of the day end up missing the mark. So this afternoon, and maybe this is not for you, I want to end this portion where Jesus started when he preached the kingdom of heaven. If you're in a place where you know you need to get some stuff right, and maybe it's not here, maybe it's those of you who are listening online. If you're in a place where some things need to change, if you're in a place where there is loss 
and you want a difference. If you're in a place where you've been expecting for something better to happen and it, it still hasn't come forth, if you're in a place where you've been making some poor decisions, repent, for the kingdom of heaven is at hand. You're going to hear much more through the coming weeks about the kingdom. Yes, has it established already on earth, or, or is it a future in the millennial period, or, or what exactly? Is it spiritual? Is it literal? What? You're going to hear all of these different things. We do know, even from today, that number one, it begins with the lordship of Jesus Christ. He has to be number one. And also it comes with this word before it that's called repent. So I'm going to ask that you stand, and we're going to open up the altar. We're going to open up the altar. And as I mentioned, it may not be for you. If it's not for you, this is what I want to ask, that you spend some time right now praying. Because the Bible says that no one can come to him except he draw. Nobody can come to him except he draw. Maybe you've already touched God in your worship, which is wonderful. But if there are some things that you need to get together, if there are some things that you need changed, I want to invite you to come up. I want to invite you to come up. God forbid we miss what God has for us. The scripture also reminds us that the time is now closer than when we first believed. You know, since I was a little boy, uh, we've been hearing about the return of the Lord. And you know what? After Jesus died and rose again, according to the scripture, and was living there, even his disciples asked him, Lord, at this time, are you going to restore the kingdom? They, again, thought something a little different than what he had planned. They thought again that he was about to put them back into prominence from a natural sense, that Israel was going to be back on the scene. Again, and they're right there in the times of Jesus. Guess what? Peter told them, this is the last and evil days. Paul, in his writings, the time is drawing near. And wait a minute, this is over 2,000 years ago. Right. What we do know is the time is now closer than when we first believed. If you have something to get together, don't wait. Don't wait. Don't worry about anybody. Get it right with God. Don't let anything separate you from getting it right with God. The day that you would hear his voice, don't harden your heart. It starts with repentance. Again, we invite you to the altar. And I'll speak this out. Maybe you're listening at home or maybe you're watching. Don't let it be said too late. Don't let it be said too late. We're going to pray right now. Also, if you desire prayer for anything, um, healing, deliverance. If you need prayer just for someone to agree with you this afternoon. You know, let's grow up. Let's, let's mature. You know, God knowing my heart, Vernon, I don't know if that's a cop-out, bro. You know, sometimes we throw that out there. And maybe, maybe not, you know, everybody here, but I know I did at one point. But when you know to do it and do it not, 
the word of the Lord says it's sin. So can we mature? Can we grow up a little bit? Be what God's called us to be. Do what God's called us to do. Be the kings and priests that he's called us to be. Let's pray. God, we thank you for your love. We thank you for your care. We thank you for your mercy. Your word says it's not your will that anybody perish. And God, I believe that's why you're delaying your return. While we have signs and there are things that are occurring, Lord, that are even spoken of in the book of Matthew, where we're seeing earthquakes in divers places, where we're hearing of pestilence and wars and rumors of wars, God, help us to not be shaken by any of this. But help us to know, Lord, that the time draws near. God, we don't want to miss out on hearing you say, well done. So help us to be about our Father's business. Help us to do what you called us to do in this earth. God, may somebody see you by the way that we live. May they recognize you by the choices that we make. May they see your glory. May they feel and experience your power. Not only in our words, God, but our actions. Help us to represent you in this earth, God. Your word reminds us that we are citizens of heaven. So God, help us to live like it. To not be so wound up, God, that we don't see the needs and the, feel the hurts of our brothers and our sisters, God, but help us to, again, represent you in this earth. And we thank you, God, for your love for us. We pray, Lord, your kingdom come. We pray your will be done. And it's in Jesus' name we pray.